Noon starts right now. New details this noon, a huge illegal gambling bust by the Bear County Sheriff's Office has turned out to be an even bigger case than investigators first thought. They spent the night digging through a building that they had raided yesterday in the 3700 block of Blanco Road. Sheriff Javier Salazar now says, along with hundreds of slot machines, investigators seized more than $130,000 in cash, more than $160,000 worth of cars, and seven guns. Of the people who they detained, eight have been arrested, and Salazar says this investigation is far from over. We do have plans to continue that investigation. Uh, I am not ruling out that other people may be looped into this. It is, it, it's, a, it's a criminal conspiracy. Uh, we are going after an organized crime case, an organized crime charge. Salazar says the building was like a maze on the inside with a number of gambling rooms. And he says a construction crew was actively building more rooms at the time of the raid. He asks anyone who has information on the case or anyone uh, or, or any others like this one, you can call the organized crime unit at 335-GANG or 335-4264. And the huge gambling bus came as a welcome surprise for some people who live in that Northside neighborhood. They say that they had their suspicions about what was happening in that building. As Katrina Weber reports, those neighbors were glad to see something being done to stop it. Although this looked like an ordinary building, some neighbors knew something out of the ordinary was happening inside. And it was just loud and um, we just saw too much people going back and forth in the middle of the night. It was just 24-7. Esther Duenas and has been living near the corner of Blanco and West Mandalay for decades. About six months ago, she started noticing a change. The Bear County Sheriff's Office noticed too and had been watching this building for a while. Last night, they moved in, shutting down what they say was one of the most extensive illegal gambling operations in decades. You could see a, a, um, a slot machine. And then so we knew there was, there was some kind of gambling. Duenas and others here told us they had a bit more than a hunch. Sheriff's investigators seized quite a haul. Gambling machines, drugs, money, and weapons. They also took about a dozen people into custody, including a 16-year-old girl. Duenia says the kind of activity that was happening in that building is exactly what they don't need in this neighborhood. She says the street is filled with families and usually very quiet and peaceful. I'm hoping that things will get a little bit more uh, rest for everybody here. After yesterday's raid, Duenia says she got what she hopes will be the first of many uninterrupted nights of sleep. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And another discovery, drugs, weapons, and body armor, a shocking discovery made in a southeast side neighborhood. This morning, BCSO says that $1 million worth of drugs were seized. And we know that six people are now facing federal drug charges in connection to the raid that happened in the 100 block of Harcourt Avenue near I-37 in Goliad yesterday. Stephen Cavasso spoke to one woman who shares her experience during those intense moments of the raid. BCSO Covert Operations, BCSO SWAT, and members of the TAG Drug Enforcement Agency raided this southeast side neighborhood, and what they found has left residents on edge, but many are staying tight-lipped. We met this woman who asked us to call her Sandra. She was outside Brook Hill Baptist Church where she volunteers when that bust sent her ducking for cover. Oh, I heard a big pop, bang noise, and I came running and got down under here under my car. High-grade marijuana, methamphetamine, heroin, weapons, and heavy-duty military-grade body armor. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the street value of the drugs is over a million dollars, and it was all found in two homes here off Harcourt Avenue, just a block away from the church. Well, it can happen anywhere. You don't know where it's going to happen. You don't know when it's next door. A total of six people are now facing serious drug charges, one of them believed to be a member of a white supremacist group. Sandra still in shock about that discovery. I don't want this happening on your average road, street, you know? She remains thankful no one was hurt, and in those moments of fear, it was her faith, she says, got her through. And I just think the good Lord of up. That's all I can say. Stephen. Also new at noon, more details about a man shot and killed over the weekend. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified him as 39-year-old Ronald Ardoz. Police say he was shot on Sunday morning at the Vista Del Rey Apartments. That's on the Evers Road, not far from Wurzbach Road. He later died at a nearby hospital. Officials have not said who shot him or why. 
a sprinkler system being credited with preventing a fire at a sandwich restaurant from spreading. That fire started in the kitchen in the Jersey Mike's that's off Highway 151 at Ingram Road on the west side. The San Antonio Fire Department says the flames broke out on a stove and it did not spread and no one was hurt. The battalion chief says the damage estimated to be a maximum of $10,000 and no other businesses were affected. Police working to find this person. They think he may be connected to a robbery at a pizza place on the east side. These pictures were taken Sunday morning. Officers tell us the suspect went up to the cashier at the Little Caesars on North New Braunfels, not far from East Houston Street. Investigators say he showed the cashier a gun, asked for money. If you recognize this man, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. One of the oldest streets in San Antonio is getting a makeover. Major improvements coming to Commerce Street. A stretch of busy roadway is now closed. Crews are replacing some aging utility lines. But as Traffic Authority reporter Samuel King reports, that's just the beginning. Downtown San Antonio can be noisy sometimes, but right now on Commerce Street, there's even more noise than usual. Crews are replacing utility lines as part of larger work to transform the historic roadway. So Commerce Street is right in the heart of the proposed Zona Cultural District, which is going to be beautiful with wider sidewalks and landscaping and new lighting. But getting there means closing stretches of the street until May 15th is the section from Flores to Cameron. The city is leaving one lane open for traffic so people can have access to local businesses. And one business owner tells me that's important during this whole construction project. A little bit of inconvenience for a couple weeks, but the city's been great. They've been helping us, directing people towards our store. Max Penner's family has owned the iconic store since 1916. The past year has been tough, they're looking toward the future. We can't wait. We can't wait for this. Uh, the sidewalks are going to widen. A lot more tourists will be able to walk conveniently to Market Square. They'll pass by our store. Most of the close to $10 million project is being paid for with proceeds from the 2017 bond approved by voters. The entire project from St. Mary's to Santa Rosa is expected to be completed next year. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. Today is the last day to register to vote in the city runoff election. Voters will decide five San Antonio City Council races for districts one, two, three, five, and nine. If you'd like some more information on how to register or check if you are already registered, all you have to do is go to kset.com backslash vote 2021. You have until 5 p.m. today to register. Early voting for the runoff starts May 24th, ends June 1st. Election day for the runoff is June 5th. Now to another heartwarming family reunion, a family that was separated at the border. The first migrant families forced to split under the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy now being reunited under President Biden. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Tears of joy and big hugs as this mother from Honduras is reunited with her teenage sons, who she hadn't seen in more than three years. After they were separated at the border under the Trump administration's zero tolerance immigration policy. Mabel fleeing Honduras because of violence. After entering the U.S., she was placed in ICE detention for two years before being deported back. Her sons, Mino and Eric, who came with her, remained in the U.S. with family. Advocates have spent years trying to find parents in Mexico and Central America. The Biden White House says the Trump administration left them with little to no information about many of the families. The Ortiz family is also one of four this week alone reunited under the administration. Sandra Ortiz hugging her son Brian for the first time in more than three years. It feels like a dream. Like I was in the car and I was just like, this is finally happening. And I'm really going to be reunified with her after all these times. It comes as the White House struggles with the record wave of unaccompanied children crossing the southern border. But officials say progress is being made. More than 5,700 kids in Border Patrol custody in March. Now that number under 1,000. The Biden administration says more families will be reunited soon, but there are still more than 400 children whose parents have yet to be located. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 
The weather has been incredible, but some changes arrived by the weekend. More humidity and maybe a storm or two. We'll talk about the forecast coming up. Former Spur Tim Duncan, future Hall of Fame inductee, looks back at his career. We'll hear from him coming up in sports. A couple of cities in our community ranked as some of the safest places to live, according to a new list. However, San Antonio did not fare as well, where it ranked after the break. Two San Antonio area cities ranked in the top 20, or rather top 10, safest places in Texas. That's according to SafeWise. Fair Oaks Ranch ranked number three, and Helotus took the number nine position on that list. Unfortunately, uh -oh, San Antonio came out in spot 251 out of 266. SafeWise says that the cities were ranked using FBI crime and population data from the U.S. Census Bureau. Other nearby cities that made the top 50, Cibolo in number 44, and Fredericksburg at 49. Uh, we're, we're safe and we're fun because we got weather like this. So, well, I mean, you know, we're a great place to be. This is care. postcard weather right here. This is awesome. I don't care who does these <laughs> polls or comes out with this stuff. It's it is awesome. Hey, look, there's a cloud too. We <laughs> first cloud in a long time. Uh, we're we're going to see maybe a cloud or two today, maybe a few more clouds tomorrow, then a lot more cloud covered by the weekend because we'll have more humidity moving in. The aquifer still going up. Two tenths of a foot today to 665.4. That's a great number. And looking at the pollen count, Mulder High Pecan is low. Your forecast is straight ahead. I think we've reached the butamus category. Oh. That's way up there. Yeah, you know, all the English teachers are going to write me letters now. Sure, I'm sorry. In longhand. And you'll let me know. <laughs> In longhand. In cursive. <laughs> yep. 10 out of 10 right there, David. I agree with you, though. It is, uh, it's about as good as it gets. We had some cool mornings this morning. We were back down near 60. And here's some more great news. Drought monitor came in today, and it's all good. Last week, 65% of Texas was in drought. This week, 45%. And as we look at our area specifically, uh, there has been a lot of improvement. If you remember, a severe drought stretched all the way up here into the Hill Country, into Bear County. That has been pushed back. Now we're just in a moderate drought, low wind. You got to go down into uh, Creaso Springs, Catula area before you run into extreme drought. And we still need some more rain down here for sure. Uh, but this is a huge step in the right direction. Uh, not completely erasing the drought, but the rains went a long way to helping us. Uh, Medina Lake, I did want to check in there. It's 35% full. It did not get as much uh, beneficial rain, or at least it, the, the numbers didn't go up as much. Uh, we're only at, uh, uh, well, 37 feet down still and only up about a foot since last week. Uh, Medina Lake still needs quite a bit more. Uh, looking at the aquifer, I mentioned it's up two tenths of a foot, 665.4. And we've gained about 15.6 feet since Wednesday of last week. So that's huge, too. Uh, we're still in stage two, though, technically. Uh, we'll see how that kind of plays out as we look at the 10-day rolling average and SAWS analyzes that. Time lapse shows that we've had clear skies most of the day, though. In the last couple of frames, you'll see a couple of clouds coming in right there. That's it. A couple of clouds uh, not going to do much for us today. 78 degrees right now. Dew point is at 60. So that number has slowly been rising, but it still feels okay out there. Easterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. And as we look at the uh, satellite picture, you can see some of those clouds coming in. With a more of an easterly wind versus a northeasterly wind, we are going to start to see that dew point creep up just a little bit. 73 Bernie State, 78 New Braunfels, 76 right now in Seguin, 79 Kennedy, and then some 80s on the map as you get down towards Catula. It is 85. It is going to be a warm day down there, probably nearing 90 this afternoon, some low 90s for Carrizo Springs and Eagle Pass as well. Everybody else in the mid 80s today with uh, sunny skies. Uh, that'll be the case going into tomorrow probably as well, other than yeah, maybe a few thin high clouds tomorrow morning. Uh, dew points. Stay in the pleasant category until Saturday. That's when the moisture really starts to move back in. And we've got humid conditions through much of next week. So enjoy this uh, dry weather while it lasts. Air quality is down a little bit today. It is an ozone action day for those who are sensitive to ozone, those with asthma, that sort of thing. Uh, just be aware that it is uh, one of those days, a little bit of pollution there. Uh, looking across the state, clear skies. There are a few clouds down there. Deep South Texas, there were a few showers earlier up around Dallas. 
and the forecast calls for quiet conditions until we get into Saturday. We may see some drizzle Saturday morning as moisture moves back in. Frontal boundary tries to sink south on Sunday, may get close enough to kick off a storm, although I think uh, chances of storms on Mother Day, Mother's Day is pretty low. And then as we get into Monday, that front's still around. We'll keep some rain chances there, and then it sort of stalls out. That could be good for us in the sense that it will bring some rain chances next week, but we're going to have to watch out for the risk of some strong storms. 88 tomorrow, 88 Saturday, 93 on Sunday. Hot and humid for Mother's Day and that slight chance of rain late in the day. A 20% chance Monday, Tuesday, or 30% chance Tuesday, and a 30% chance Wednesday as well, guys. I know you've already picked flowers for Mother's Day, haven't you, Justin? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Was that it? Was that a I guess yeah, or a no. yeah, that was it. Absolutely not <laughs> sure. yet. Um, Spur fans are going through a, an emotional trauma right now. Isn't you sad, mad? What, I don't know. How are you supposed to act if you're a Spur fan right now? <sighs> That's a tough question. I don't know. I mean, I guess you need to remain optimistic because yeah. there's still a chance that they're going to qualify for the play in tournament. But man, they better start winning some games. Spurs at the Jazz. Yikes. 126 and 94 loss. Oh, man. And Jordan Clarkson playing for Utah at Wagner is having his best career, his best season in the NBA coming up. <clears throat> we weren't going to win the game, so it wouldn't have made much sense to uh, play Mr. Macho and keep him out there. That was Pop's reaction when asked about giving some of his older guys, like Patty and DeMar, most, if not all, the second half off last night, allowing the young guys to play a lot of minutes in big board sports. Pop also said it's hard to get away from the fact that the Spurs Cup is pretty empty after a tough travel schedule and some tough losses. The Spurs and Jazz were close late in the first quarter. DeMar goes reverse layup and they trailed 26-31 with 2.37 left in the first quarter. After that, the Jazz went on a 17-0 run in a three and a half minute span to end the first quarter and to start the second frame to put this game on ice. Utah led by 24 at halftime and by as many as 41 points in the fourth. Spurs fall 126-94 and have lost five in a row. It's part of the NBA. Nobody have a flawless year. You go through moments like this. You go through adversity sometimes more than you you will like. Um, but with that, you, you you can't let it diminish your confidence. Understand, you know, we still got what, six games left. Still six opportunities for us to be able to put ourselves in a position to keep keep playing after that. And that's how we got to look at it. Guard Jordan Clarkson led the Jazz with a game best 30 points on 12 of 16 shooting off the bench. The Wagner great is having his best season in the NBA, averaging a career high 17 and a half points per game. Like I said, I'm a hooper. I'm going to shoot my shots. You know, they're going to go in sometimes. They're going to you're going to miss. It's part of the game. You know, uh, when they fall, you know, it feels good. But, you know, I'm always confident. I'm always going to take those shots and, uh, you know, keep it rolling. Spurs will play at the Kings tomorrow night at 9. Next weekend, Tim Duncan and the rest of the star-studded class of the 2020 will finally be enshrined into the Nate Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, which was delayed due to COVID-19. Spurs drafted Duncan number one overall in 1997, and he led them to five NBA championships and a countless number of great moments. I'm not going to name one thing that I appreciate the most. I enjoyed the journey, and uh, I enjoy it even more now looking back and uh, uh, just missing being a part of that, but also at the same respect, having gone through it, just understanding how present you have to be uh, uh, every day, every game. Uh, I think I was, I was better at that later, uh, later in my career as a uh, you kind of see the end coming where you're just like, OK, well, I'm here tonight. I'm going to appreciate this game tonight. I'm going to appreciate this moment tonight, this practice today. I'm going to, to, to be present instead of being like, oh, OK, I just got to get through this. Uh, you know, it happens fast. It goes by fast. Uh, so uh, I look back and I, I appreciate the entire journey. 
The class of 2020 enshrinement ceremony will be held Saturday, May 15th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. And Tim will be presented by Hall of Famer David Robinson. That will be exciting. What a night that's going to be. And, and I think the fact that there's so many of us in San Antonio that we're along for that ride with him. We just kind of like watching that journey take place the whole time. We all enjoyed the journey, Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable, right? It was 20, great. 20 years of that. Yep. Man, miss him. Prices for new cars are skyrocketing around the country. Supply has been plummeting due to a shortage of essential computer chips. What you need to know before you head over to the dealership, coming up in your next half hour. And cruise ships are getting close to setting sail again, and the companies are getting a chance to do a practice run. Details on these simulated trips coming up. New today at 5. Surprise ambulance bills in an emergency. They can be lifesavers, but when you get home, you may be faced with a big and unexpected bill for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Coming up at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at why it's often not covered by your insurance and what's being done about it. Protests continue in Colombia despite President Ivan Duque's withdrawing a controversial fiscal reform proposal this weekend. The mayor of Bogota, uh, Claudia Lopez, announcing on Twitter that the protests on Wednesday left 23 civilians and six police officers injured. Lopez said the local government reached an agreement with unions to lift the blockades to enter Colombia's capital. The mayor calling for dialogue so that an agreement can be reached in order to end the tension and street violence. For the first time, the CDC is projecting that coronavirus cases will fall sharply by the end of July. That's if we continue to see Americans get vaccinated and social distancing in areas where there are hot spots. However, health experts are also warning that a substantial increase in hospitalizations and deaths is possible if unvaccinated people do not follow basic precautions. Some areas like the Pacific Northwest seeing a rise in cases driven by unvaccinated young people. But in other parts of the country where cases are down and vaccinations are up, life is starting to return to normal. New York has, was once America's former COVID epicenter. However, today Broadway showed signs of life with ticket sales resuming. It's been a year since the U.S. labor market simply collapsed and millions of Americans, unfortunately, are still out of work. And it's predominantly lower income workers, women, Hispanic and black workers. America lost more than 20 million jobs in one month when the country was shut down last year. Forecasters predict America still down more than 7 million jobs. On Wednesday, the ADP employment report, which measures private payrolls, said 742,000 jobs were added in April, mostly in the services sector, particularly in leisure and hospitality. The CDC letting cruise lines run trial voyages with volunteer passengers. It's a step toward allowing them to resume normal operations in U.S. waters. The simulated voyages must have a capacity of 10% or more. Participants have to be vaccinated or they have to get a doctor's note saying they're not in a high risk category for COVID-19. The CDC is also providing cruise lines with health procedures. Prices for new cars are on the rise as dealerships are struggling to keep up with demand. The issue is that there just aren't enough new cars being manufactured. Edmunds.com says nearly 13% of car shoppers in April paid more than the sticker price. Imagine that. Experts say a global computer chip shortage is fueling the problem. In some cases, car companies have halted production. Dealership car inventories are down nearly 50% nationwide. Available trucks down 64%. So how can you ensure you'll even get a car? If you know what you're looking for, go in, make your best deal and buy it as soon as you can. Don't wait because somebody is going to be there right behind you that's going to want to buy it and take it out from your hands. Edmonds recommends searching outside of your home city. Try calling your dealership. Tell them to keep an eye out for what you're searching for. The chip shortage is not expected to end until the end of the year. Outside with live cam, it's a good time to ride around with the windows down or the top open or Maybe top off. Maybe just jump on a bicycle. Or 
There you go. There's that too. Yeah, it, it is that kind of weather outside. The perfectly uh, clear skies at the moment. We had a couple of clouds earlier, but otherwise sunny skies. And, and what that is allowing temperatures to do is really jump up quickly. We started off at 60, but we've already gained 18 degrees, 78 now here in San Antonio. Most of Texas sitting in the 70s right now. Some low 80s uh, down uh, near Del Rio, Laredo, Corpus Christi, out towards Marfa. But these are really comfortable numbers, and we're going to be right at about average today. Most of the country is dealing with some pretty great weather. 50s and 60s, even some 40s up around Chicago. Caribou, Maine, 43. It's uh, really just uh, Florida there. It's really been baking. 88 in Orlando, 89 in Miami, those typical hot spots. And Phoenix also sitting at 85. Uh, rain chances this week. We'll start to see them step up a little bit as we get into the weekend. Sunday, about a 20% chance. Monday, 20% chance. A little better shot, I think. Tuesday into Wednesday as we get a frontal boundary. It's not going to really move through, but it gets close to us enough to generate some showers and storms. We'll have to watch for a couple strong storms, though, during that period. Today, 86 your high temperature, sunny skies, easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney arguing in a Washington Post pop, oh, pardon me, a Washington Post op-ed that her party needs to stand for facts and conservative principles. This as she faces removal as the third ranking member in the House GOP leadership for being out of step with her party. Cheney coming under fire from her GOP colleagues for rebuking former President Trump's false claims of election fraud and for his role in the January 6th Capitol riot. ABC's Alex Brashe has the latest from Washington. The Republican Party's in a very public fight over its identity. Overnight, Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney, the third ranking member in the House, penning this op-ed in the Washington Post. Writing, the Republican Party is at a turning point, and Republicans must decide whether we are going to choose truth and fidelity to the Constitution. Cheney has been one of her party's most outspoken critics of former President Trump. I have, I've been clear my views about uh, President Trump. Repeatedly blasting him for falsely claiming the election was stolen and voting to impeach him for the role she believes he played in inciting the January 6th insurrection. Cheney's op-ed also calling out House Leader Kevin McCarthy for flip-flopping on Trump's role in the Capitol riot, writing, On the floor of the House on January 13th, McCarthy said the president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress. Now, McCarthy has changed his story. This public stand now almost certain to cost her her role as Republican conference chair in an upcoming vote. Both McCarthy and his number two, Steve Scalise, publicly expressing their support for Trump-endorsed Representative Elise Stefanik to replace her. Stefanik was one of 121 House Republicans who voted against certifying Joe Biden's Electoral College victory. Signed affidavits document numerous unconstitutional irregularities. While Cheney has little support in her caucus, several conservative organizations have come out against Stefanik's promotion to leadership, saying her voting record is not conservative enough. But Cheney's not fighting her ouster from leadership. A source telling ABC News she doesn't believe the position is worth it if it requires lying about the election results. Cheney writes in her op-ed that Trump's continuing to say that President Biden's election is illegitimate, knowing that that's language that sparked the January 6th attack and that there is good reason to believe that this lie would provoke more violence in the future. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Still to come this half hour, a coach is more than just about X's and O's. Larry Ramirez will explain in just a few minutes. The U.S. tracking debris from a Chinese rocket as it falls out of control. Space agencies around the world are trying to avoid leaving big pieces in orbit that could fall back to Earth. But not this particular rocket. And as CNN's Will Ripley reports, it's not the first time. The first thing to keep in mind here, scientists say, is that you do not need to panic about this. This is not the end of days. Yes, there is a 22-ton Chinese rocket that is hurtling around the world at 18,000 miles an hour. And it's going to hit potentially somewhere in the world once it enters the Earth's atmosphere, which is believed to likely happen between May 8th, which is Saturday, May 9th, Sunday, Mother's Day, or May 10th. So one of those three days, there is a chance that because this thing is so big, 22 tons is roughly one fifth of the size of the U.S. Statue of Liberty, minus the base. 
So you've got big pieces of metal that might not burn up upon re-entry, like most things that fall from space do, and they could land. Most likely, scientists say, over the ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the biggest, so maybe there's a chance it'll come down here in the Indo-Pacific region or the Atlantic Ocean, a body of water where the chances of hitting anybody are very slim. But what if the debris did come down in a densely populated area, like here in Hong Kong or New York? There have been incidents in the past where rockets have re-entered and pieces have hit areas with people. There was a village, a small one, that was hit with a 12-meter pipe a number of years back. No major damage or injuries there. But when you talk about another scenario, the worst case scenario, sure, it can be pretty concerning. And what's also a little bit surprising and troubling about this is that they won't know where this thing's gonna hit until literally hours before impact because of the fast speeds that the debris is traveling. 18,000 miles. One hour can make the difference between the impact in one area or somewhere 18,000 miles away. But the lesson that we all need to learn here is that these things happen. They're going to happen and they might happen more because China is going to be launching more large rockets like this as they work toward the completion of their space station by the end of 2022. And 2021 was supposed to be the year that everything got back to normal, right? Will Ripley, CNN, Hong Kong. I'm feeling better about it. <laughs> hey, honey, what's that chunk of metal in our backyard? Ooh. Where'd that come from? Man, he was, no, he, you know, <laughs> I know it was part comedy, but. Yeah. Was it? Uh, I thought he was serious the whole time. Uh, well, I hope, I hope he wasn't. <laughs> Let's hope it falls in the ocean. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're hoping. That's the takeaway. Yeesh. All right, uh, 78 so far today. 60 was the low this morning. We were below average uh, this morning. 64 is the average low. Records are 99 and 47. You're going to start to see these records jump into the triple digits here soon. So it could be so much worse this time of year. We've really been doing pretty well. It does warm up this weekend. More humidity, maybe a few storms too. That forecast is coming up. All right, so we're waiting for debris to fall from the sky on Mother's Day. <laughs> I I Any rain in the forecast, too? No, 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 I'm not forecasting that. Thank you. We're not going to have that happen. <laughs> we're going to have a good Mother's Day for, Thank you. for all the moms out there. Yes, it, it looks pretty good, although there is an outside chance for a storm or two Sunday evening. But we'll get to that here in just a second. Well, let's talk first about the low temperatures this morning. Very, very comfortable. 60 here in town. It did get down into the 40s this morning. Kerrville and Fredericksburg. 49, both spots there. 57, Uvalde, 57, Rock Springs. Great morning for a run. It's getting a little hot now, though. Clear skies, slightly dry, drier air. That's allowing temperatures to race up pretty quickly. We're at 78 now, but I bet we're in the 80s by next hour. Easterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. More of an easterly component to our wind is also allowing dew points to come up just slightly. Close to 80 in Bulverde, 80 in Castroville, 77 Tarpley. You're at 77 out there in Lost Maples. And some 80s on the map down to the south and west. Katula, our typical hot spot, sitting at 85 right now. Dew points, well, they're in the low 60s. We're at about 60 here in town. But as we go forward in time, you'll notice dew points still pretty comfortable tomorrow. This is 5 o'clock tomorrow in the 50s. That's in the pleasant category, not too bad. But Saturday morning, Moisture really shoves in here quickly. We've got dew points in the upper 60s, close to 70. I think that's going to do a couple of things, lead to some cloud cover, some drizzle, maybe a little bit of fog too. So Saturday morning has potential to be a little bit damp, but I think by the afternoon, skies will clear out some. As for today, we're going to be up around 86. Skies will be clear all the way through. We may see a couple high clouds tomorrow morning, but that shouldn't be a big deal. We had a couple clouds earlier. See it about one frame right there. Some clouds popped up and then they've gone away. So we've got clear skies once again. And as we look at the uh, big picture here across the country, new severe thunderstorm watch box there across parts of Missouri and that uh, looks like parts of Illinois as well as a uh, little area of thunderstorms comes through there. But Really, the rest of the country is remarkably quiet. Some storms down there across Florida and the whole western half of the country is barely seeing any rain at all. Uh, nice to quiet down a little bit after what had been a pretty rough couple of weeks. Forecast 
for us calls for again a couple high clouds tomorrow. Then as we get into Saturday morning, we mentioned some of that drizzle, higher humidity levels. Those stick with us through the weekend. By Sunday, a little frontal boundary tries to push south. The big question is how far south does it make it? We also have a dry line in place. So Sunday evening, I can't rule out a storm, but I don't think it's likely uh, it would be very isolated. And that'll be the case Monday too, although this front seems to be getting a little bit closer. So some isolated storms Monday, maybe a little better chance Tuesday into Wednesday as it stalls out. It's that time of year too. We're gonna have to watch for a few strong storms. All the ingredients are there. We'll keep an eye on it, but uh, right now we're going to keep rain chances on the low end. 20% Sunday, 20% Monday, and then a 30% Tuesday, Wednesday. Where that front sets up, that'll have a big bearing on our temperatures too. Right now we're shooting for upper 80s on Tuesday. Uh, but 93 Mother's Day, it is going to be hot and humid. So if you have Mother's Day plans, just know you don't want to spend a, a long, long time outside because it will be hot, guys. You're not used to that anymore. No. We'll be by July. <laughs> Through the darkness of that big loss last night, there's a little bright spot. Yeah. Just a little one. Just a little one. But all the Spurs young guys got a lot of extended yeah. playing time last night, including Spurs rookie shooting guard Devin Vassell, who is really taking advantage of his opportunities right now. And the Yankees are on a roll. They're just handling the Astros coming up. Bright spot from the Spurs blowout loss last night is the fact all the young guys got a lot of playing time. Like rookie shooting guard Devin Vassell, he logged a season high 31 points, 31 minutes, excuse me. He scored 14 points on six of 10 shooting to go with four rebounds, two assists, and one block shot. Now that Derek White is out, Vassell is part of the starting five and trying his best to do all he can to impact the game in a positive way for the silver and black. Yeah, uh, just bring energy and defense. Um, you know, we have great players, players who can score the basketball. Um, I'm just trying to, at the end of the day, cause some havoc, some commotion on the other end, uh, be disruptive, cause steals, um, just play my game at the end of the day. But I challenge myself the most on defense, you know. Spurs will play at the Kings tomorrow night at 9. The Spurs have seven games left in the regular season. So here's the Western Conference playing tournament standings. Portland is 7, Memphis 8, Golden State 9, and the Spurs are 10th, holding down the final spot. They lead 11th place New Orleans by 1.5 games, but it's more like 2.5 games because the Spurs own the head-to-head -head tiebreaker with the Pels. Seeds 7 through 10 will compete in a playing tournament at the end of the regular season for seed 7 and eight. Congratulations to Jefferson High School head girls basketball coach Natasha Benavidez for being named the 2020 2021 Thomas Jefferson School Teacher of the Year. This past season, she led the Mustangs to a 20 and five overall record. The District 27 5 8 championship, their first district title and the program's first playoff game. On top of that, she's inspiring her students in Algebra one and all of Jefferson High. When we told our, our athletes that I was um, selected, they were just so excited and it was a great opportunity to talk to them about, you know, setting high standards and why we do what we do and um, just kind of trying to be that role model of a, of a student athlete. Even though I'm not uh, a student or athlete anymore, I'm in the, the teacher sense and trying to make sure that they understand that our education is just as important as athletics. Astros at the Yankees yesterday, and Yankee fans are still giving the Astros a grief for their cheating scandal and probably will for a while. Bottom of the fifth, Yankees down 3-2, two, two on for Giancarlo Stanton, and he comes up with a two-run double down the left field line, and the Yankees take the lead for good, 4-3. New York wins it 6-3. The Yankees are going for the three-game sweep right now. Rangers visiting the Twins, top of the sixth, tied at one. Cody Stashak and Kirk's a wild pitch. Nick Solak scores from third, and Texas takes the lead 2-1. Later in the inning, Andy Ibanez flies out to deep center with a runner on third. Nate Lowe scores on the sack fly to make it 3-1 Texas, and that's your final three to one Texas Rangers in the Texas League yesterday. The missions lost at the hooks four to two Corpus Christi pitchers struck out 17 missions batters. The two will continue their sixth game stand tonight at Whataburger Field. So do you think Coach Benavides breaks down defenses using algebraic equations? <laughs> I get, I'm just surprised you know how to say algebraic. Do you know what that means? No idea. Okay. Algebra is what like was the word he made up earlier that you didn't like? Butamus. Butamus. Yeah. yeah. Can't do algebra, though.
Were you good at algebra? So now we've insulted the math teachers too. No, we didn't. Oh, good. They can't help us all. I mean, there's some of us just can't do algebra. <laughs> you know, just, I mean, you know. I apologize. There's in just advance. some of us don't get it. So I can do geometry. <laughs> no math in this show. No, so, no, no. Thank no. you. But, but this show is blooming with love for mom, right? As yes, we celebrate indeed. moms. Yeah, Liz, okay, you go to the store, you get this bouquet of flowers. Before you, you know, put it in a, in a vase or something like that, okay, you can't present it in plastic. No, 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 no. no, no. Big mistake. However, easy, easy peasy, and this young lady, Megan Sophia from Bloom and Sons, is going to show us what to do, right? Simple way to dress yeah. this up? Yeah, easy way to dress it up is you can grab some tissue paper. You can grab some, any kind of thicker paper or newspapers. Um, and all you can do is you can get those out of the plastic. You'll cut them out. Okay. You'll bring them into the center and you'll just wrap it. A little flower swaddle. Think about like swaddling a baby. <laughs> Plus, if you need flowers, boy, we'll tell you where she's going to be this weekend. Hey, and how about some really yummy barbecue? Oh, goodness gracious. Look at that place. This is just in time for Mom's Day if you want to barbecue up a feast. And speaking of food. Speaking of food, Jen is hanging with Chef Johnny Hernandez and celebrating a celebrity. Yes, the iconic Criticolo Mexican artist is celebrating her today. Not only is there any business of a tan of the garden, but Chef Johnny Hernandez and her beautiful family join us. Hi. 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 Family's cook, cook. Yeah, there's margaritas too, all inspired by Criticolo. That's coming up, guys. So super excited about it. Yeah, we're going to see what they're cooking up. So yeah, cooking, you know, lunch is always a good time to chat with somebody. Who would you like to have lunch with? Yes, past or present, living or dead, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And we hope to see some of those answers in the show. A lot more on SA Live. Stick around.